is taught attack surface and attack vectors, please subscribe our channel for new updates and new tutorials. Thank you. Attack surface and attack vectors An attack surface surface in term of network security is the sum of all the all of the vulnerabilities that our network or de devices might see. It is different area that an attacker could either take control or cause damage to. And so we can break this down into certain classification. So let's classify the attack surface. Now the first area that we have is the network. Now the network area could involve ports that are open but shouldn't be the use of protocols that are insecure. Things like Telnet and FTP, where we have a clear text password that are being passed. It could be user that have access to administrative accounts. It could be bandwidth issues that could be exploited and cause problem for us. There are all areas where the attack surface would involve the network. Now another area that would be included in our attack service surface would be the area of software. Now in the term of software, what we are talking about here are problem with the coding. So there could be improper coding, could be vulnerabilities in the application, poor privacy setting. Often times people use open source application and therefore the community is not maybe providing upgrades and patch management very well. And so that would cause some problems. We have all the physical area of the attack surface which could include anything that is hardware or physical like the implies itself which could cause a problem or devices or that are connected to the network that should not be connected to the network like a road rogue access point or a rogue switch or something that nature. We have social engineering. That is another attack vector. We have password that are put onto sticky notes. We have a people who are sending out emails that are fishing for information. And oftentimes our end users are being exploited in that manner as well. Now in terms of cyber security and being an analyst, you should be aware that we are not going to completely stop attacks. Attackers are going to continue to find alternative ways of spreading malware or accessing devices. So the proper security considerations should be focused on our high risk area and using proven techniques to protect from attacks and also using advanced techniques and advanced technologies, perhaps like the Cisco ASA with advanced malware prevention or protection and using those to prevent against emerging threats, the threats that we haven't seen yet. Analyzing our attack surface is going to help us to know what areas can be fixed right now. We can access the risk and determine the level of risk if it is high value target and when we can go ahead and patch from there. We want to test for vul vulnerabilities and flaws in our system and our software and then we also want to have a plan on how we are going to respond during an incident of compromise or an IOC. We also want to use our security information and event management tools to help us tighten down our security. Now there are some considerations that we want to make here. So we want to design and develop the network infrastructure with the recommended security features and make sure that they are used in the right way so that we have certain wall of protection. We want to hide vulnerable ports and make sure that we are preventing users from bypassing firewalls and gaining access through those open ports, especially when those ports are for protocols that are known to be vulnerable or less secure. Again, like Telnet, we want to perform real-time monitoring of our data in the network. 
we want to promptly respond to changes in real time. So we really need to be watching the network. We want to get rid of unwanted or unused application that will help us to reduce some of the risk. We want to limit the number of users and application for both performance and security reasons. We want to enforce our policies and procedures on everyone in the organization and we want to have them trained. A security pol policy can be properly enforced and used as mechanism to prevent internal attacks. And we wa also want to reduce unnecessary requests such as emails, database access, web pages, and alternatively, we can use load balancer, advanced firewalls, and VLANs to isolate users and to divert the attack from accessing more high-value areas in the network. Now speaking of attack vector, this refers to the method that an attacker is going to exploit. And this could be a mean for them to exploit our system or our network or software application. So we see viruses, we see email spam with malware attached, we see adware and we need to be aware that again our methods of providing security are not foolproof. It is important for us to maintain our bug fixes or patch updates and that will help, help us to prevent certain attack from happening. We can classify these attack vectors based on their behavior or the amount of loss that could incur if a certain device were attacked. And so we could rate these or rank these as either belong low risk or medium risk or high risk. And then we want to focus on mitigating the high risk first. Now some attack vector could include specific attacks like SQL injection and there are specific areas where we are going to prevent against SQL injection attacks. Typically in our database servers, we have distributed denial of service attacks and we will be preventing those attack, attacks on our web ser servers or perhaps on our firewalls, on our network gateways. There is phishing attack eavesdropping and malware injection attacks and typically the attack vectors that we experience most often are going to affect our client computer or our important server. So how do we prevent against these attack vectors? Well, there are a number of ways to protect against these different areas of attacks. Some common ones include using honey parts to trap the malicious activity and divert it from our real target, using load balancer to manage the amount of traffic that we have that help to provide efficiency on the network. Also act as security measure, implementing advanced firewalls and encrypting our data, ensuring that we put our configuration through the proper test to ensure that we don't have any misconfiguration that we could run into making sure that our antivirus software is updated, enforcing our security standard, making sure that we are using the right protocols in the right location on the networks, that we are implementing proper procedure in terms of security standards and educating our employees about the risk that is involved and the impact that is involved in the cybersecurity area. Also, the use of our security information and event management tools can also reduce the risk, especially if we are watching for anomalies and taking measures immediately rather than waiting for a composite attack to occur and being at a point where it is just too late to make an, any difference. The next we are going to talk about reconnaissance attacks. So please subscribe our channel for new uh, videos and tutorials. Thank you so much for subscribing.